Have you ever heard the phrase, I'll believe it when I see it? While this phrase might make sense in our daily lives, there are so many things in biology that we just can't see with our own eyes. Organisms, like bacteria, are constantly taking up chemical compounds, rearranging the atoms, using some for building cell components, digesting some, and respiring others. How can we track or observe a process that is happening at this almost incomprehensibly tiny scale? One answer is radioactive isotopes. Let me refresh your memory on isotopes. Each element in the periodic table has a set number of protons, but can have a variable number of neutrons. Atoms of the same element that have different number of neutrons are referred to as isotopes of the element. For example, carbon has three major stable isotope forms, C12, which has six protons and six neutrons, C13, which has six protons and seven neutrons, and C14, which has six protons and eight neutrons. You get the pattern? So, all elements can have multiple isotope forms, but some of these isotope forms are even more special and are referred to as radioactive isotopes. These isotopes are unstable and will convert to a more stable isotope form spontaneously, releasing energetic particles in the process. Some radioactive isotopes convert incredibly quickly, with lifetimes measured in seconds or less, while others are moderately fast, with lifetimes measured in minutes to hours to days, while some are much slower, with lifetimes measured in decades, centuries, or millennia. In biology, we can exploit the radioactive isotopes that have moderately long lifetimes to track atoms and molecules. We can do this by detecting or measuring the energy or particles that are released when the isotope converts to a more stable form. Some useful radioactive isotopes used in microbiology experiments include hydrogen-3, carbon-14, phosphorus-32, and sulfur-35. Let's use radioactive isotopes to see how this works and to learn something about the major macromolecules in the cell. Remember that the major macromolecules are things like lipids, carbohydrates, proteins, and nucleic acids like DNA and RNA. The macromolecules are made up of building blocks that contain certain elements, as this table illustrates. For bacteria to grow and reproduce, they must have a source of all these elements. In nature, bacteria have to scavenge compounds containing these elements from the environment. But in the lab, we can provide them with sources of these elements and track their incorporation into the cell. Let's say we are interested in determining which elements can be incorporated into nucleic acids and proteins. In order to answer this question, we will do a set of experiments. First, we will grow some bacteria in a flask with a phosphorus source. The trick is that the phosphorus source is made up of the radioactive isotope phosphorus-32. Now, we let the cells grow for a while. Then, we collect the cells, break them open, and separate and collect the nucleic acids and proteins. So, we have a tube containing the cellular nucleic acids and a tube containing the cellular proteins. Now, we measure the tubes to detect radiation, or more specifically, the emission of radioactive particles. Which tube do you think will emit radiation? 